number 33, use the standard free energy information data in Appendix G to determine the free energy change for each of the following reactions, which are run under standard state conditions and at 25 degrees Celsius. Then we have to identify each as either a spontaneous or a non-spontaneous reaction at these conditions. So our balanced equation here is CS2 gas plus 3 Cl2 gas yields CCl4 gas plus S2 Cl2 gas. Now, we're trying to find the free energy change. Free energy is more specifically Gibbs free energy. And the variable is after Gibb, the scientist who invented it. So that's a G value, G for Gibbs, Gibbs free energy. We want to find the change. That's always a delta value. So we're solving for delta G. And since we're using standard information from the back of a textbook, in this case, it's Appendix G, right? Standard state conditions, we're looking for a delta G notch. Anytime that you see that notch in the upper right-hand corner, that means textbook, right? Standard values. So that's exactly what I did. I went in the back of the textbook to find out what each individual delta G value is for each component. Now, what are we gonna do with that? Well, the formula, if you only have delta G's, is this one right here. Delta G for the whole entire reaction, RxN reaction, is the sum, that's this, the sum, that's addition, of all of your delta G products, so the right side, minus the sum of all of your delta G reactants, which is the left side. Now, are these numbers going to stay the same or are they going to be different? Well, that goes by the balanced equation. Look at your coefficients. You have no coefficient in front of the CS2. That just means you had one of them. You had three CL2s. You had no coefficient in front of the CL4. That's one. And then no coefficient in front of the S2Cl2. So that's also one. Those coefficients are what you're going to be multiplying the delta G value that you saw in the back of the textbook. So... 66.8 will be multiplied by one. Just showing you for, you know, uh, purposes of what's gonna happen if you have three of them, right? So this would technically be 66.8 times one. This would be zero times three, but anything times by zero is itself, right? This would be negative 58.2 times one. And then this would be negative 29.25 times one. Now we have to sum up the sides. Literally, it's CS2 plus the CL2s. So this value plus this value, that's the summing it up. This, I don't really need a calculator. I could throw that in. You can, I mean, but 66.8 plus zero is the same number, 66.8. Now, do the same thing for the, the product side. It's CCL4 plus S2Cl2. So it's this plus this. That I'm gonna throw into my calculator. Let's see, negative 58.2 plus a negative 29.25. So I get a negative 87.45. Okay, now I have my two values. I'm gonna use my equation. Let's go for it. So delta G, for the whole entire reaction is products minus reactants, negative 87.45 minus 66.8. Okay, delta G for the whole entire reaction is, let's see, I'm going to take that value, I'm going to press enter, minus 66.8. Okay, now, without rounding, it's a negative 154.25. However, we have to take into consideration sig figs. This is to the hundredths place. This one is only to the tenths place. You're only allowed to go out to the lowest, you know, the lowest number place after the decimal. So in this case, we could only go out to the tenths place. So this 25, the five rounds up to two, to a three. So this would be negative 154.3. Units for the delta G is kilojoules, because if you're taking your kilojoules per mole and you're timesing it by your coefficients, the coefficients are mole values. So if you're timesing it by moles, moles will cancel out. 
and therefore you only have kilojoules. So that is your answer. Now we just have to figure out, is this spontaneous or not spontaneous? Well, that goes to what we have to memorize. Delta G less than zero, that means that it's a negative value. Anytime that you have a delta G that's a negative, the reaction is spontaneous. It means that you don't need any extra energy, like extra oomph, outside of the system to make the reaction go. This just runs by itself. It's spontaneous, right? When you're spontaneous, you just do things, you know, whatever, right? Spontaneous trips. You just buy a ticket, go, go wherever you want, right? Delta G being a positive value, greater than zero, that's non-spontaneous. You need that extra push, the extra external energy. Since ours is a negative, it's just going to go by itself. So this would be a spontaneous reaction. Doesn't need any extra push from any outside source. And that answers this question. Okay. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Really hope this helped. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Comment if you want to let me know if this helped you out. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.